Street Fighter V is one of my favorite games of all time. There was a lot of criticism on its launch, but fortunately, I started playing later in its life, after most of the bad parts had been fixed up. My humblest opinion is that in the concluding season of the game, with the final balance updates in place, the roster is now the most diverse it has ever been. I will guess that only 1% of the player base believes that previous statement, but I will stand by it. Street Fighter VI draws near, and so in honor of the legacy of Street Fighter V, I decided to assess myself, my own investigation if you will, as to how well I can use the entire cast of the game against the hardest level of the AI. How much have I truly involved myself in Street Fighter V, and how ready will I be for everything new in Street Fighter VI? In part, that's what this challenge was about. After 9 grueling rounds including all 45 characters, here is the final standings. I claim 31 victories against the AI's 14. Just over 2 out of 3 for me. I'll take it. Of course, I wish the number was higher, but the challenge was tougher than it initially seemed. Another stat I wish was more impressive is the number of critical art finishes. Only a mere 4 matches ended in 1. I play conservatively with the EX gauge, but 4 finishes still feels embarrassingly low. What isn't more exciting than ending about with a cinematic view of me decimating my opponent? Here's a look at all four. Watching Street Fighter V matches is surprisingly engaging for me. Like a good game of sports, or a tussle between the stars of a reality show, there is something compelling in watching the action unfold and analyzing the events in the aftermath. What was my best match? To clarify, best match here is the match where I completely shut out the computer from any momentum and the selection was approached as objectively as possible. Scoring a perfect would apply if I had any, but most importantly, which fight did I have the most control in? It's not shocking to consider that the characters I main, like Karin and Poison, would have featured strong performances from me. In review, however, only one match was a standout. Rose. And I've used her against every other character. My combos may have been basic here, but there was no doubt. I controlled the match with confidence. The computer did not stand a chance. What was my worst match? Whatever I said for the best match criterion, reverse it. What match did I not have a chance in? Which one was a total shutout for me? I definitely had some shameful contenders here. Nikali and Balrog are both present because they were charged characters that I had the least experience with while Zeku was the character I had the least experience with, period. Hands down, however, the worst match for me was Sangif. The grappling playstyle was not for me. I'd rather keep distance and zone the opponent until I have a chance at a good combo. On top of that, the 360 rotation specials did not feel natural in my hands. In this match, I had no hope. My personal favorite match. Unlike the best selection, this was judged as subjectively as possible. Which match did I enjoy the most? Of course, all of my mains were included on this list, like Karin, Lucia, Poison, and Rose. I will also tip my hat to Sakura and Falk, two characters who I wish I could main. 
You may be surprised to hear, but ultimately I settled on a match that I lost, and that would be Ed. He was my main for some time, so to lose this round was probably the biggest disappointment. But there are two points to why he was chosen. One, I did not know him as well as I thought, which is encouraging me to pick him up again. Two, he was changed significantly from the last few updates, which means he has been made viable. Finally, some recognition for an underrated character. What was the most surprising match? By this I'm referring to whichever match was the most informative for me, whether I knew the character or not. Victory did not necessarily matter in this consideration, as this was purely based on how much the fight exceeded my expectations. For the most part, this included rounds where I did not expect to win, or even to have a good time with the character. Yurian and Akuma are two of the hardest fighters for me to use, so winning with both surprised me. Also, scoring a victory with Dalsum and his bag of fiery yoga tricks was unexpected as well. I ultimately settled this time on Luke. Of the new characters, I have probably used him the least. Even Oro, a charged character, received far more practice sessions with me. Not only that, but Luke's toolset is incredibly esoteric and requires frame-perfect timing for success. Taking a win in this bout, then, was definitely the most surprising match for me. Speaking of Luke, let's discuss what's new. Street Fighter VI is scheduled for a release sometime in 2023 for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC at the time of writing. Leaks aside, the cast that has been confirmed so far includes Ryu, Chun-Li, and Guile, all in much more refined and older forms. Luke will also be featured as a protagonist, and he will be joined by fellow newcomers Jamie and Kimberly. Adventure elements will be included, as players can use a thus far unknown character to roam what appears to be Metro City. In combat, the drive system will be the core mechanic. This implementation will essentially draw all of the previous gameplay features from prior Street Fighter games, and leave it up to players to use whichever they would like mid-fight. First opinion, a quick one and certainly the most humble one, but I'm not a fan of the graphics thus far. Capcom is going for much more realistic character designs, which is great. Yet, I find some of the models slightly off-putting. Chun-Li does not look the same, and Luke actually looks like he aged in reverse. Luke seems to be younger in appearance and demeanor, and I'm not a fan of his main outfit. Jamie, Kimberly, and Guile look great, but Ryu is the winner for me so far in improved design. I'm sure my thoughts will change once I have the game in action. I do have some thoughts on possible new characters or additional DLC characters, but I will save them for another time. I am glad for an adventure element in the addition of the City Traverso mode. It is perfect in case players are sick of winning their bouts consecutively, or in my case, having their behinds handed to them constantly. Perhaps there will be missions to take on, or secret items to discover. Could this possibly be a new way to unlock characters? or extras like costumes and colors. The fight money system of Street Fighter V was pointless, but maybe that economy concept could translate well into this new mode. If done right, this could be Capcom's answer to Mortal Kombat's Crypt mode, which was a fun diversion from endlessly fighting. My anticipation is high for this feature. The drive gauge is very intimidating for what I've seen so far. Matches start with the gauge full, and players are allowed to use any of the mechanics as desired. Bear in mind though, that if this system features the mechanics of previous Street Fighter games, that literally means an opportunity to use one of five moves to enhance fights, if not complicate them. Now, alongside remembering special moves and combos for each of the characters, there are five more inputs in play that can turn the tide for players. Longtime fighting game fans will appreciate complexity in their matches, but even this might be too much. Perhaps some players will be overly dependent on certain drive moves, or just avoid all of the elements entirely. Maybe the hodgepodge of mechanics is exactly what Street Fighter VI needs to really set the tone of competition, and will inspire even the simplest player to really experiment with all their know-how. I know I'll be looking forward to some very interesting playbacks amongst the elite fighters. Here's my final thought on Street Fighter VI. It is likely the most boring one, considering all the aspects of fighting games, but I wonder, 
What is the narrative direction of Street Fighter VI? Shadaloo seems to be practically dismantled, so M. Bison may not be the antagonist. Street Fighter VI takes place after Street Fighter III, which means Gil and his organization may no longer exist. Seth is now just a roaming robot intent on becoming more powerful, which makes him as much an antagonist as Akuma. Hint, not likely. So who is the new bad guy? Is there even an opposing faction, or will this be a bunch of fighters looking to best one another in random street matches? As of the ending of Street Fighter V, Ed will lead a new crew, dubbed Neo Shadaloo, but their intentions are very unclear. Also, G was a highly intriguing character whose motives seem very suspicious as well. And really, is M. Bison truly dead? Was he ever truly dead? Maybe a new character will take his mantle, or rather, his overly sized blood red cape and dictator hat, and stand in as a new villain. The only confirmation is that Luke will be the leading protagonist. Friends, it is time for something new in the Street Fighter universe, and Street Fighter VI is shaping up to be that juggernaut level change everyone is clamoring for. I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Thank you very much for letting me wax poetic about one of my favorite franchises ever, and to Street Fighter V, it's been fun. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.